welcome to the second of four reviews this week. Um, up this time is a game called Grizzland. Um, not exactly sure um, why it's called Grizzland, um, as in the sense that you're not dealing with grizzly bears. Mm-hmm. Like, no. Um, you are... I'm not, I'm not exactly sure who you are. Um, that's kind of one of the central things in this game, but more on that in a bit. Um, anyway, uh, Grizzland is a retro-styled... They build it as an open-world platformer, which, you know, I think works a bit better than Metroidvania. Like, um, if this is a Metroidvania, it's, like, babies first. Um, and even then, like, yeah, you can go back and forth, but, uh, you know, like my main issue with calling this a Metrovania is, um, the way the game is structured. It's more stage based than you'd expect. Like, um, you know, your primary task is, um, watering plants, you know, watering trees. Um, and, uh, in terms of retroness, uh, like, this is, you know, um, this is rare. Like, this is a game that seems to be invoking, I'd say, the Atari 2600 era. Like, or, or like, the very early computer games. It's monochrome. The sprites are even more abstract than usual. Um, and everything is um lo-fi even by lo-fi standards but i mean enough introduction this game was played on the playstation 4 and that means um petty fan is our lead here so take it away uh yeah so this is kind of a weird beast indeed like for one there's a pretty bad glitch or something where if i try and walk up a slope i stop on the um the the top and it's just kind of stuck um so yeah i can jump But yeah, it's still kind of a bit of a pain. And as far as gameplay goes, it's all right. Damn it. Sorry. Um, like, I wish combat was more nimble. Because. Yeah, like. There's so much reset lag on your swing, it's not even funny. And then, yeah, I'm mostly the end here, so I have all the power-ups. I have the double jump, the sword, the shrink, the teleport, and there was one other one, I think, but I'm forgetting the name of it. Uh-huh. Okay. But yeah. yeah. Right. Um, I suppose the thing to note is, uh, even though the game seems short, it's not really a short game. Right. That is to say, well, that that is to say, you can blitz through the main portion, let's say, um, pretty quickly, you know, a few hours. Mm-hmm. But the real meat, once again, is tied to the you know whole Metroidvania idea. There are secrets in this game, <laughs> um, pretty vast and deep secrets. Like uh, there's a whole series of notes that you can find, mm-hmm. which gives you the details of an um, an exploration team and what they did. Like. Um, and also what they did to the planet. Like, uh, you find out that they were the ones who deforested the place. You know, mm-hmm. Like, they're the ones who, uh, you know, they're the reason the, sa- uh, the trees need the water, basically. Uh, 
And there are also uh, you know, hidden passages, like illusionary walls and places you teleport, um, and so on and so forth. Mm, they also Once have the again, standard jump pads and whatnot. Right. Um, so there's a bit more meat here than uh, meets the eye. You know, it's still not something that would... Uh, Teeter towards, say, a Hollow Knight, um, or um, God, I'm trying to remember that uh, that one Metroidvania Naka did uh, a few years back. Um, uh, doesn't matter. Um, you know, it, it's deep, but not too deep. Right. Uh, anyway. Um, Music, once again, uh, very chip, you know, it's very chip tune, yeah, oriented stuff. Though I kind of turned it off after a bit because it, I don't know if they use the same song over and over again, but it kept getting on my nerves. So, understandable, chip tunes can do that, yeah, but mm-hmm. you know, unlike the visuals here, um, the chip tunes aren't any like, like, sort of disti- like. They don't specifically sound like the, you know, uh, un, they, they don't sound like the, a SID chip or nice. an NES or anything like that. They just sound like chip tunes. Um, uh, anyway, pricing. I think this it's game, like $5 on PC. Yeah, this game um, does have price parity. Wow. Now, granted, the PC version is being uh, run on sale at this moment in time. Um, 30% off, $349. Um, and that's not being applied to the console version because, well, the different company, you know, different companies handled uh, the cons version, or, well, just the one. Like, not a rattle like a game this time. But uh, you know, still in the same spirit in terms of price. It's five dollars um, wherever you go, and th- this game is definitely worth five dollars. Like, mm-hmm. I'd probably even notch it a bit more. Um, maybe up to like if this game costs seven dollars, I'd still say it would be worthwhile. You know, ten dollars. I think that's where the breaking point lies. But you know, it's a decent little game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, you know, clunkiness and glitches aside. Right. Which is something that's on the PlayStation 4 version, as we, as far as we can tell. Like, I didn't have any performance problems or jumping problems. Um, once again, that could be a platform-specific issue. That could be a company-specific issue. But yeah, this, this is kind of like what I'm talking about. To get over the rest of this slope, I have to jump. Um, yeah, kind of weird. Yeah, I did not have a problem. Like, or that could be a late game thing. No, because this was happening at the very beginning, too, so... Okay, then, yeah, yeah, it's whatever's going on on the PlayStation 4 here. I can you confirm that. Um, anyway... Um, you know, I, once again, solid game, um, maybe a bit above average, Mm -hmm. a bit above par, but no more than that. Like, yeah, but this is something I'd personally play in short bursts because I, I kept kind of getting enraged at some of the deaths because again, clunky combat and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like. Um, and yeah, so overall, slight recommendation in terms of our final verdict. Um, and yeah, so that'll about do it for Grizzland here. Uh, be sure to uh, tune in after the break as the Galax here will be reviewing the Switch version of The Man with the Ivory Cane. <laughs> 